These are models of Air Force ballistic missiles, Thor, Atlas, and Titan. In model form, they don't appear to present too great a logistics problem, but in their full-size configuration, with a myriad of specialized and highly complex components, they present a formidable logistics problem. The most significant logistics problem associated with the ICBM IRBM program is the compressed development pattern. In the usual weapon system development pattern, there is a research and development period, followed by an evaluation and suitability test period, where a limited number of weapons are tried out in a simulated operation environment. Following this, there is the decision to produce in quantity for inventory. This latter portion is called the operational phase, and this span of endeavor sometimes takes eight to 12 years depending upon the weapon. During the evaluation and suitability test phase, there is time to gather logistics data and a knowledge of how to support the weapon when it enters the operational inventory. However, a totally different situation exists in the ICBM IRBM programs where the R&D phase is closely followed by the initial operational capability or IOC phase. The IOC is part of the R&D program, but at the same time has the same characteristic as the operational phase. The IOC is the start of the operational buildup, even though the weapons will be in R&D status, as will be the ground support equipment. With this acceleration and unique development pattern, SAC, ATC, AMC and AFBMD have engaged in joint planning to ensure that required information was given R&D personnel on a timely basis from the inception of the development program. In this way, planning and support of the operation and support of the IOC phase has been made compatible with the planning for the operation and support of the fully operational phase when the ballistic missiles have a fairly static configuration. In the final analysis, there is only one objective in designing an operational logistics support system, and that is to satisfy the using command requirements in the most effective manner. Out of this overall objective arrive several specific objectives. We must have, of course, reflex logistics, the most immediate possible reaction to the needs of the user. There must be maximum reliability not only in the operational system itself, but also in the logistics support system. The impact of component obsolescence must be reduced to a minimum. The simplest administrative procedures must be devised and maximum use made of total assets. With the high cost of modern weapons, everything must be done to husband resources. In addition, many factors must be considered while developing the ballistic missiles logistics support system. First, the operational mission demands an improved logistics capability. If missiles are to be fired on short notice, the Air Force cannot afford to have any significant number of them remain inoperable for any length of time due to the lack of spare replacement components. The Air Force is also confronted with a very critical personnel problem. Not only in operational type personnel, but in maintenance and clerical type personnel as well. Therefore, the impact of paperwork, which the logistics system generates, must be limited. It must also be remembered that while weapons are being produced for the initial operational capability force, test missiles are also being produced for the R&D testing purposes. This overlapping of R&D and IOC phases of ballistic missile development brings the subject of obsolescence sharply into focus. The ICBM-IRBM program is unique in that while IOC forces are being supported, the engineers will simultaneously be designing new parts, new systems, new components, and new assemblies. And while spares and equipment are being produced for the operational force, the engineers could be designing a change into those same items. Thus, the items may be obsolescent or even obsolete at the time they come off the production line. Obsolescence is one of the biggest problems confronting us. The Air Force cannot afford to provide a lot of spare parts to each operational organization because of this key factor. 
Another factor to be considered in connection with ballistic missile logistics is the geographical implications. ICBM units will be scattered across the United States. One can imagine what would happen if a vast horde of spare components and equipment was procured to support each of these individual units. The cost would be staggering in money, manpower, and our productive resources. Now having covered some of the problems and factors involved, the Ballistic Missile Logistics Plan. We'll start with the operational squadron. Operational squadrons are to be self-sufficient and will maintain a minimum supply capability of both peculiar and common items. Peculiar items being those designed specifically for a ballistic missile weapon system. Common items being those now in Air Force inventory. Housekeeping type support, tables, chairs and the like, is supplied to the missile squadron by a host base. One such host base may supply several operational squadrons. Items, both peculiar and common, required in direct support of the operational mission are provided through a separate expedited channel to the operational unit. All subsystem contractors are held responsible for the supply and maintenance support of their products until an Air Force depot capability can economically and feasibly be developed. This means that the supply flow will be direct from the contractor's plant to the host base and then to the operational squadrons. Each squadron will have a maintenance capability consistent with available skills, equipment, and space. Any maintenance required and which is beyond the capability of the operational squadron will be performed by either the AMAs and depots or by the contractors. Items required on a day-to-day -day basis by the operational squadrons and which are now in the present AMA depot structure will be assembled in a central weapon system storage site. This phase of the ballistic missile logistic program will be accomplished by making use of approximately 100,000 square feet of warehouse storage space at Norton Air Force Base, California. At this newly created central weapon system storage site will be kept a small working stock of common and standard Air Force items. The operational squadron will maintain a minimum stockage of all direct mission support items. If a squadron should require any part immediately and the item is out of supply at the squadron, it will be airlifted from the weapon system storage site to the host base from which it will be sent directly to the operational unit. These items need not pass through the host base stock record account. The aircraft with the request items merely lands at the host base for transportation offloading and the supplies are immediately sent to the requesting squadron by vehicular transportation or by helicopter if such service is available for operational purposes. If a common and standard item, not normally stocked at the storage site, is requested, it will be shipped immediately from the appropriate depot to the host base. And, as with a peculiar item, it will then be sent from the host base to the operational unit by the most expedient means. Now a word more about supply and maintenance support. At the earliest point in time that it becomes feasible, economical, and opportune, the supply and maintenance support responsibility of the contractors will be supplanted by an AMA depot capability. Airlift will be used when appropriate to evacuate reparable assemblies, components, and parts from operational units to the AMAs and depots, pausing only at the host base for transportation documentation and for assembly of shipments. Log air will be used for the transportation of all high priority components, both serviceable and reparable. To support the highly expedited Air Force Ballistic Missile Program, Air Material Command streamlined its support concept and established a specialized responsibility, the Weapon System Support Manager. The single AMC Ballistic Missiles Manager 
has the total centralized logistic support responsibility for ballistic weapons. An integral part of the Weapon System Support Manager concept is an electronic data processing center. This center is the heart of a fully integrated electronic data processing system. Through the center, the ballistic missile manager will be tied electronically to all AMAs and depots, to the weapon system storage site, to the contractors, and to the operational squadrons. Accountability for all systems assets will be held by the ballistic missiles manager. He will have a full measure of control over all assets in this system and will know where each part is at all times. He will be able to support the Atlas ICBM in this manner at the time the first squadron becomes operational and will phase in for the Thor IRBM at the earliest practical moment. Programming inputs from the using commands are provided for at the ballistic missiles manager level through SAC and BMD liaison personnel who are members of the ballistic missiles manager organization. We'll go into more detail about this organization and the EDP system and center in a moment. But first a word or two about the transport of ballistic missiles. All three ballistic missiles, Thor, Atlas, and Titan, will be handled by military aircraft whenever road conditions preclude the use of specially designed missile trailers. The basic Thor can be transported on an aircraft dolly via the C-124 aircraft. Many successful shipments have been made from Santa Monica, California to Patrick Air Force Base, Florida, using this system. An Atlas ICBM will fit into a C-133 after major modification of the rear door and certain internal features of the aircraft. Additional modified C-133s have been programmed to handle the airlift task. The ICBM Titan is a little easier to transport. Being a two-stage missile, it can be handled in two sections, and a C-133 can carry both stages in one flight. Now for a closer look at the electronic data processing system concept. The use of electronic data processing is not a new idea. Industry and the armed forces have used EDP for many years. However, the manner in which it's used in ballistic missile logistics is new and different. The EDP center itself is located at Norton Air Force Base, California and is the heart and brains of the Air Force Ballistic Missiles Logistics Plan. This equipment will provide the ballistic missile manager with information for efficient control of all direct support equipment and parts for ballistic missiles. As an example of the operating speed of the equipment, a five-digit on-hand figure can be multiplied by a three-digit extended inventory value on 1,300 stock items in one second. At essentially these speeds, the EDP center will function as a central accounting point for ballistic missile parts and components and will expedite the flow of spares and replacements to the various operational organizations. In a word, reflex logistics. To explain how the EDP center will speed the flow of reflex logistics to the operational units, we'll use this chart. A mechanic at a squadron pulls a black box out of a missile, goes to squadron supply, and draws a serviceable replacement. Squadron supply immediately transmits a punched card to the EDP center, which tells the EDP machine that one black box was issued by squadron X. The machine subtracts this issue from the balance recorded for that squadron and evaluates this information by comparing the new balance at the squadron with a squadron stock control level. If the new balance and stock control level are compatible, nothing else happens. If, however, the balance is below the squadron stock level, the EDP machine sends out a shipping order to the weapon system storage site for Air Force common and standard items, or to a principal missile contractor in the case of peculiar items. 
This shipping order directs shipment of a new black box direct to Squadron X to bring Squadron Supply back to the proper control level on the item. To accomplish this resupply mission, the Electronic Data Processing Center is tied to all elements of the ballistic missile logistics system by a transceiver network augmented by teletype service. Punched cards are fed into the hopper of a transceiver and the information on these cards is automatically transmitted by impulse over telephone or telegraph lines. These impulses cause the information contained on the punched cards to be reproduced on unpunched cards at the receiving end. This transceiver net will extend from the EDP center to each operational squadron, to the main contractors, to our weapon system storage sites, and to the existing AMC transceiver net. Thus, reflex logistics is accomplished in a minimum of time. Of course, the EDP will do much more than just getting a black box to the user. The machine will, among other things, electronically collate and reproduce the following elements of information. Computation and scheduling, tech data and file maintenance, maintenance data, programs and management reports, and inventory control. Inventory control is perhaps the aspect which is best known to all military personnel. At variance with existing systems, ballistic missile inventory control will be maintained by recording balances by location and by squadron worldwide. The accountable stock record for all strategic squadrons will be maintained at the EDP center in the computer actually recorded on magnetic tape. With these and with the levels generated by the computation and scheduling inputs, automatic resupply will be achieved. Among its many other important functions, inventory control will generate data for monthly reports for recording our dollar inventory and changes to our dollar inventory. It will generate the consumption data, which is the basic input to the compilation of stock levels and requirements. EDP will also generate something new, data for transportation scheduling, actual records of shipment, pieces, weight, cube, or any other element desired by transportation people are included, so that log air and other transportation schedules can be best used for the most efficient support of the weapons system. Time does not permit detailing all the functions that are accomplished by EDP, but the saving in money, time, and manpower is tremendous. This communication schematic depicts how they eat all the related agencies. The ballistic missile manager, the weapon system storage site, and EDP center are tied to the principal ICBM contractors by a transceiver circuit and backup teletype circuit. The office of the AMC Ballistic Missile Manager is located in Inglewood, California at the AFBMD BMO Ramo Woldridge Complex. His management organization is at Norton Air Force Base, California, site of the EDP Center. Through the AirComNet teletype circuit, the EDP Center is connected to all Air Force installations. Via the AMC transceiver net, the center is tied into all AMAs and depots, and via both transceiver and backup teletype circuit, the center is connected with each host supply base and thence to each individual operational squadron. Simultaneous transmission can be made by four squadrons directly to the EDP center. Thus, under this system of communication, the ballistic missile manager through the EDP is connected at all times with the elements of his logistic operation. Four IRBM elements will be connected to this communications net. The essential addition to the system to satisfy overseas traffic requirements will be an overseas link which will consist of a 100 word per minute quality teletype line used alternately for transceiver and teletype operation. The cost of having a separate communications link to each 
IRBM squadron would be excessive. Therefore, the net will tie into one squadron, which will relay the messages to the others. That briefly is the Air Force Ballistic Missiles Logistics Program and its integrated electronic data processing system. It promises efficient management on a weapon system concept of our entire strategic ballistic missile program. To me, it is a squadron commander's dream come true. Supply problems for direct mission support will be absorbed by another agency, the ballistic missile manager, and the EDP center. As a result, the squadron commander will be able to devote his entire attention to operations and the proficiency of his unit. <laughs>